Hey everyone, back again with another Flutter video and today's session we will look into top 5 Flutter tips which I guarantee you didn't knew earlier. And as a quick note, in order to visualize the changes or if you happen to face issues with any of the Flutter tips which we are about to discuss, then make sure you have the latest Flutter SDK installed in your device. Alright, therefore without any further delay, let's dive into the video and get started. Now starting with the main data file where the home points to tip number 1. And the tip number 1 is nothing but a stateless widget class containing a simple app bar and a body that contains the text widget and two colored container widgets which are placed in a column wise manner. If suppose if we need to render this first color container widget based upon this render value then what we probably will do is we make use of the if statement and check for the render value. So inside this if statement let's try to call the colored container. Now based upon this render value we are trying to render this colored container widget and this is applicable for only one flutter widget. If suppose there is a scenario where you need to group two or more flutter widgets under a single conditional statement and in order to do so we will wrap these two colored container widgets under the square bracket and make use of the spread operator. Now by doing so you will be able to group two or more flutter widgets under a single conditional statement. So this is a simple flutter tip which might be helpful while working with the logical part. Alright, here comes flutter tip number 2. If you are tired of resizing your flutter widgets based upon the available screen size or if you are someone who is using media queries to resize the widget to fill the available space then we got you covered. We have a simple flutter widget which will help us perform the same task in a more simpler but an effective way and that is nothing but the fractionally size box. Here we have a simple container widget where we have specified the width and height as the 50% of the device width. We can perform the same task with the help of the fractionally size box in a more simpler way. What we need to do is, we just need to wrap this container inside the fractionally size box widget and we can provide the width and height factor as 0.5 and it, which means that it is going to take 50% of the available space. And this media query and this width factor is not the same because the media query actually includes the app bar height as well as the bottom navigation bar height. But it is not the case in fractionally size box. So this fractionally size box only determines the available space which the widget can take. And here we have specified as 50% of the available space. And that is the reason we see that there is a shrinking in the size and width of the container. So this flutter widget will be helpful in cases where you need to resize a widget based upon the screen size or if you find hard getting the context while using media queries you can literally go for using fractionally size box widget and the third tip which you are about to discuss is going to be my favorite say for example if you open the terminal here in your vs code you see that under the problems tab we typically will have some problems being listed down here and we might be tired of fixing each problem one after the other. If you are wondering to fix all these problems under a single command then we got you covered. You can head over to your terminal and just type dot fix double hyphen apply. And this command will fix all the problems that is listed down here in this problems tab. And as you can see here it has fixed three unused imports that is present in the main data file. You don't need to manually go and rectify each problem yourself. You can just run this command in your terminal, it will do the hard work in fixing all the problems. This will be very much helpful while we are working with large scale projects having tons of simple problems being listed down here in the problems tab. The tip on the list is going to be returning multiple values under a single return statement. What we have here is a simple elevated button placed right at the center. And in the on press event, we try to call multiple returns method. And this multiple return method is going to hold four different numbers ranging from number 1 to number 4. And here in the return statement, we simply try to print number 1. Because this is the more traditional way where we try to return a single value. And upon clicking this, we will try to get this number 1 value, which is 2 here. And if you are wondering a way of returning all these four numbers under a single return statement, then we have a solution for that. What you need to do is you can just group this return statement and you also need to update the same here. Now you will be able to return two numbers simultaneously with the same return statement. And in order to access these numbers individually, 
we make use of the dollar symbol followed by 1 so this will access the first number similarly you can make use of dollar 2 in order to print the second number now if i click this you see the number 1 which is 2 and the number 2 which is 4 is getting printed in the debug console this applies for both positional as well as named arguments and now consider we try to return this number 3 and number 4 in the form of named arguments what we need to do is we just simply need to name that number you can name this number with the same name as number 3 and number 4 and the same applies here while returning you need to name the number as number 3 and number 4 now here accessing this number 3 and number 4 will be quite different you can make use of the temp followed by dot operator you have the option to print in the form of the name itself instead of going for the dollar symbol you can make use of the name which you have already defined now by doing so if i click this you will now notice that we are able to render all these four numbers in a single return statement and we also made use of both positional as well as named arguments and this typically breaks the rule for returning only one value in a return statement of any method. Hope this tip will be very much helpful if you are wondering to return multiple values under a single return statement. And the final tip what we have in the list is going to be grouping multiple futures in a single line. Here we have a simple elevated button and under the on press event we try to invoke method 1 and method 2. And this method 1 and method 2 are nothing but simple future methods which is going to print method 1 and method 2 respectively and if i run this code you will notice that upon clicking this now after a delay of 3 seconds we get method 1 being printed and followed by the delay of 2 seconds we get the method 2 being printed now if you are wondering instead of calling these methods one after the other or if you are trying to find a way to write it in a single line we have a solution for that what we need to do is we can group these two methods using the square bracket by doing so you will be able to now write these two methods in a single line you can just group two or more methods with the help of the square bracket to write them as an inline function so you can make use of this syntax if you are trying to improve your code quality or if you want to make your code look even more of a high level all right so this is no way going to affect the logic even if i click this method after a delay of 3 and 2 seconds you may get this print statements being rendered so this is a simple way of grouping two or more methods in a little line using a square bracket so these are some of the basic flutter tips which everybody might use in a daily basis hope you found this tutorial useful if you do so consider subscribing and i will see you again in the next video